voice. That was my regular voice. It was spooky music. Okay. That was my regular okay. it's time to start the show voice. So we're going to do just that. B big day of NFL trades yesterday. Demarius Thomas is joining Deshaun Watson. The Packers shipped off a star defender. But why don't we start with the Philadelphia Eagles, who made Carson Wentz a very happy quarterback yesterday. Philly traded a third-round pick to the Lions for wide receiver Golden Tate. Asked why he traded for a guy on the last year of his deal, Eagles GM Howie Roseman said he's one of the most productive receivers in the league and that his run-after catch numbers are phenomenal. Tate now joins the receiving core of Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey. All right, CeCe, what impact do you think Golden Tate can have on this Eagles offense? Uh, um, I, I like the fact that, that Howie uh, Roseman, the general ma manager, he focused on a skill set as far as what it will provide, not only to Carson Wentz, to this offense, and in this new NFL. People would think that maybe Philadelphia might go for a running back, because a couple running backs potentially could be available. Why don't they trade for them? If you can't get a running back, or you're happy with your running backs, you have to get a guy like Golden Tate, a guy who can play in space, a guy can play in the slot. He's also played outside. He is not a just a short area quickness guy. He's not only limited to the slot. He has deep speed so he's not a possession receiver to me he's one of he's one of the guys i like watching play because he's developed he left seattle after being the third receiver there to an increased role in the money in detroit in the last four years he's been phenomenal you talking about he's the most dangerous guy after the catch we have in the NFL. Yep. You think, well, what about Odell Beckham? Odell doesn't get the ball as much as he does and doesn't do as much as him. Because the game plan and what they've done in Detroit, he's been able to highlight his skill set. I believe he's a tremendous addition to the Philadelphia Eagles and Carson Wentz. Because people say, well, they gave up a third-round pick. That's a lot of compensation. He's in the last year of his contract. If he decides to leave Philadelphia, they're going to get a compensatory pick. It's probably going to be a third or fourth rounder anyway. So I like the move to Philadelphia. It doesn't cost them that much. And if they lose him after this year, they'll be able to move on by getting another pick in the, the future. The, those compensatory picks work assume, like what you lose in free agency versus what you bring in in free agency. So if the Eagles decide to stand pat mostly in free agency and they let Golden Tate leave, they get something back. Yeah, but Detroit, instead of getting a pick in 2020 after him leaving after this offseason, they're going to get the pick right now from Philadelphia. And Detroit, I don't think, would have ended up get, even getting a compensatory pick because I think they're going to be buyers this offseason. So even if they were going to let him go, they were going to bring in enough this offseason to where it would probably minimize what their compensation would be. But for the Eagles, C touched on it. He is, since he came into the league, one of the five most productive yards after catch guys in all of football and the most productive yard after catch high volume guy meaning the other guys who have similar yard after catch numbers to him are not guys that are getting targeted a hundred plus times per season mm -hmm. what have the eagles struggled with in the passing game this year they're bottom six in the league yard after catch so that is a puzzle piece that fits perfectly where we are missing you are adding and that fits fits well the eagles this year have one game where they've scored three plus touch, where they've scored more than three touchdowns. That was the Giants game. One game where they've scored more than 24 points. The Giants game. Like Philadelphia, yes, they had a path to victory last year that was great defense and ground you down. But they also had a path of we're just going to crush you. We're going to put up 35 points. They've only done anything close to that once all year, and it was against a terrible Giants team. But what I like the most about this move for Philly is it's Howie Roseman saying, I know the first half of the season didn't go right. You know what? We're still going for it. We still think we can defend our crown. We still think we can win this division and make noise in the playoffs. We are willing to give up. But some, you know, the 85th pick of the draft for maybe only eight games and a playoff run of Golden Tate, it's worth it to us because it's a shot in the arm. And maybe for the guys in the locker room, it reminds them, man, last year we did it with Jay Ajayi, and that helped us win a Super Very Bowl. Aggressive, this yeah. year, maybe we do it with Golden Tate and helps us get close or get back to it. All right, before we get to how far the Eagles can go with Golden Tate, you talk so much, CeCe, about this, about offenses looking very much like the, the starting five on a basketball team. Mm -hmm. So tell me what Golden Tate does, what position he would basically play between Eglar and um, Alshon Jeffrey. Okay, let's see. Alshon Jeffrey right now is their best receiver, and Zach Ertz is the tight end is very, very good. So if we're going to start in five, I would say Alshon Jeffrey is going to be my center. Zach Ertz is going to be my power forward. I believe my score 
scoring forward is going to be Golden Tate. He's a better run after the catch than Nelson Aguilar, trying to use the backs out of the backfield. That's how you're able to supplement the passing attack. That's how you're able to put. When I want a wide receiver unit, I want a point guard. I want a guy who can score. I want a big guy. But Golden Tate is the best wide receiver on Philadelphia's roster now. Yeah. He has the most skill. With Alshon Jeffries, they should look good together because Alshon is a possession receiver, red zone target, Golden Tate, he's everywhere. He's all over the field, and he's very, very friendly to the quarterback. Well, what do you mean by that? He runs his routes and he gives indicators. We saw last week where two interceptions in the Minnesota game were caught, or two turnovers were caused by the wide receivers, stealing, fumbling, and Stephon Diggs giving a wrong wrong. indicator for um, Kirk Cousins who threw an interception return for a touchdown. He doesn't do that. He's a veteran wide receiver. He's played with veteran quarterbacks, and he's the kind of guy that I believe can bring a spark to Philadelphia's locker room right now. Give them the type of energy and bounce to give them a lift so they can go on this playoff run. I, I wasn't sure you were going to agree with me, but you just said it. I do believe he's the best wide receiver on Philly now, and that's nothing against Alshon Yeah, well, Jeffrey. actually, you agree with me. Okay, well, just because you got to say it first. <laughs> My point is, when I when I heard yeah, well, I this news, so when I heard this news come down, I thought, wow. I mean, he's going to come in and be their best wide receiver. Which means Aguilar moves to third. Well, he'll, he'll be the third. Sure, the, yeah, if we're ranking them sure but really Aguilar's not playing as well in the slot that's why there is a need for someone like Golden Tate Aguilar we thought had a breakout season last year this year he's kind of gone back to year number two and he's not as important as a third wide receiver is on a lot of teams because of Ertz because one of your best receiving options is your tight end so if you have Ertz Jeffrey and Golden Tate that's going to take care of the vast majority of your passing attack and no receiver in the league has broken more tackles than Tate I am curious your opinion on what the time frame of picking up the offense is. Golden Tate has been, in, been went to Seattle, then Detroit, now he's in Philly. What, how long until he can really make a true impact? It's still going to take time. I wouldn't see him as a full-time player for a month. I still see him playing initially 20 plays to start with. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if potentially they moved him back to return punts. He can return some punts to be able to try to make plays. <clears throat> I know Doug Peterson, they know the urgency to it. So when you have a player that has come from two good situations, I look to him to be a smart football player. He's got a high football IQ. So they'll try in the next two weeks, how can we get him to play in 20 to 30 plays? And also some of those bubble screens and things like that, they're not real, real sophisticated. Right. So I think those things can be implemented in week number one. And Philly, by the way, on a bye this week coming mm -hmm. off the London game. So he won't have to worry about anything for at least another 12 days. Second year in a row, Howie Roseman went out and got aggressive and picked up someone, J.H.I., last year. And Golden Tate this year. Can you see this offense starting to put it together? Can you see them getting back to where they were last year with what the team looks like right now? Maybe back to the Golden Super Bowl? Tate helps, but he did, he's not going to help Jason Peters, the left tackle. He's not going to help Lane, the right tackle, because they have not played good football. So, yes, they have more weapons. They have more things to be able to get the ball out of Carson's hand. I like the fact that even though Golden can be a deep threat, He's so good run after catch. You can throw him the ball right now. So that will help the offensive line. It's almost like an extended running game. But they got to get their offensive line together. And personally, Jason Peters, after coming back, uh, get, taking a reduction in salary, this is the worst football I've seen him play in at least 10 years. So that's what I'm going to be watching that offensive line in Philadelphia, even though they have one more weapon to build throw to. And listen, Philly understands the situation they're up against. Washington's 5-2 and two with, as I've said before, the softest remaining strength of schedule in football. The Eagles are 4-4, four and four, and they have five divisional games left. Here's their non-divisional games. At the Rams, at the Saints, and home for the Texans. Those are three divisional leaders right now, in addition to having to play Washington twice, having to play Dallas twice. So it is, Philly knows they've got to find a way to, at a minimum, go six and two. So this was the best available player they could acquire. They did it. Now, if they end up going four and four in the second half and they lose Golden Tate, they're going to say maybe this was a shot they want back. But he also, the one other thing about Golden Tate is he is a fiery personality. He's a guy that is 
he's known, he, he had the skirmishes with Percy Harvin back in the day with Seattle. Like, he's going to bring an edge to that locker room that could be useful for a team that right now is almost stuck in a post-Super Bowl malaise. So I, I like this move for Philadelphia a lot. All right, the Eagles pick up Golden Tate, not, by the way, from California. He's from Tennessee. We'll talk about that in the break. Coming up, should Aaron Rodgers be furious that the Packers were sellers at the deadline? That's next on First Things First. It's also not from Tennessee.